everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to talk about just one chord, the dominant seventh chord. This one. Okay? And I have ten approaches which will help you really understand the purpose of this chord, train your ear, thus train your ear to acknowledge, okay, this is what the chord can really do, and uh, also improve your theory. So in this two-part lesson series, I'm going to take the dominant seventh chord and look at ten ways in total, five in part one, five in part two, ten ways to kind of train your ear and your theory to be aware of the sound of that chord and what it does for music, all the scenarios it can be used. And in my opinion, I think this is the most important chord in music. Yes, you have major, you have minor, but music does not have the ebb and flow, the tension, the re resolution, the, the release and the anticipation, you know, uh, if you don't have this chord. And this chord is probably the oldest chord along with major and minor. You would have major, you have minor, and then you have this one, this is the dominant seven. So I just want to share with you how I use this chord and how you can train your ear and hopefully use these approaches to, yes, first of all, train your ear. It's primarily a ear training awareness lesson. Uh, but also, well, you have to train your theory. So if you uh, stick around, the theoretical concepts will also be super useful for you guys to try out. And then there are a lot of piano So it's a very important As I use this term, theory That's 
what we call as the authentic cadence. Now there are two notes which make this cadence really magnetic. You know, so you go D F sharp A C. The C tends to really want to go to the B. So. I would urge you to practice it in two ways. One is stick the four up on top. So four going to three, and then you could also do the seven going to one. Because the seven is very close to one. So that D F sharp, which is D D G. Right. So this should give you a very good way of using the dominant Train your ear. Right? And as I say, move that four to the three. Practice the step motion on the piano. Then back to the four, seven goes to the tonic, the octave, you could say. And again, it's very popular, very complicated. Practice it well. And use the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths. Case. 
is the find of this G major. So when you use the dominant seventh or D seventh, it will resolve to G major seventh. While when you use D major seventh, it's a very different flavor. It will pretty much stay resolved. So in this approach of you adjusting the sound of the dominant seventh chord, my recommendation would be practice D major seventh and observe it as a more stable entity while the D dominant seventh is actually a chord that comes outside the D major scale but resolves to a chord within the D major scale. In this case, the G major seventh because it's the five of the four. This is how I write it, five of four. It's also called as a secondary dominant chord. Um, we've done a very, very detailed set of lessons on the secondary dominant chord using a bunch of song examples. So, uh, watch those YouTube lessons as well. Okay, and just to play around with it, I just thought I'll pick a song, you know, so you take Falling in Love with You. Uh, you take Wise Men Say So what did he do there? He did D major F sharp minus 7 D minus 7 And then Then we go to the 4, E flat, 
session is pretty much going to use the 1 chord, the 4 chord and the 5 chord for its work. Now the formula or the, the progression will be Roman 1, going to Roman 4, back to Roman 1 and then you stay on Roman 1 demonstrated by these dots and then you go to Roman 4, stay on Roman 4 and back to
5 dominant of E flat. So anyway, we'll take you back to E minus 7. Thank you. 